Oh, well, I first read about it when it was uh, announced back in 1987, and I got very excited about it, thinking, wow, if this performs like advertised, this could be very, very big in the future. And so one thing led to another, and before we knew it, we were working in this, uh, in this industry. And it was quite small back then, and, and of course it's grown to more than $6.1 billion, according to uh, Wooler's report, 2017, expected to grow to $16 billion by 2020, which is only three years away. And we expect it to continue to, to grow and expand as companies adopt the technology, uh, particularly for the use of production applications as opposed to prototyping. That's where the money is and that's where it's headed. So we're quite uh, excited and encouraged by uh, what we're seeing, uh, not only here in the United States, but uh, in Europe and, and around the world. The technology has an economic significance, absolutely, in local communities, regionally and, and internationally, but it extends well beyond just the economics. That, uh, if you look at the benefit of using the technology for, example, medical models, where you can produce uh, uh, surgical models that can be taken into the operating room. Uh, most of the conjoined twins in recent history have benefited from this uh, technology where they plan the surgeries in advance, where they're, gonna, they're going to make the cuts and, and where the blood vessels are, and then they can take those into the operating room and help with the uh, separation. And, and, and also uh, many, tens of thousands of implants are being produced. Uh, by 3D printing. We're talking about knees, hips, uh, spinal implants. Uh, most hearing aids today, in the ear, uh, custom fit hearing aids today are being manufactured by 3D printing. The, the technology has developed to the point where almost anyone can access it. So you can buy machines now for less than $1,000. So if you're uh, an inventor, uh, a hobbyist, a, a maker of some sort, uh, a student, or even a retired individual, you can now buy a machine and run it in your little lab at home and build things for new product development. And so that's exciting to, to see that uh, develop. Uh, likewise, we're seeing mid-range and then high-end machines that are being developed for all kinds of organizations, uh, educational institutions, researchers, uh, corporations of all sizes. And so companies such as GE, Airbus, Boeing, Stryker Orthopedics, and the list goes on, have been buying and using these machines. They continue to expand their adoption of the technology. And that's very exciting to see these companies embrace it to the degree they are.